Got to balance those high hopes with those lofty expectations. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Breaking down the game we love better than anyone online. Best uh, bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the industry as guests. And analysis, of course, from myself as well. Talking up the Florida Gators. And before we do, I want to remind you that we've got a special offer in play. If you'd like to throw a few bucks at the games, please do so on betnow.eu. You can grab the link in the description section below right next to the hashtag Sam Strong. So this is for a very good cause. Check out the video where I explained that cause. It's for cancer research in conjunction with uh, uh, Volunteer Roadshow, St. Jude's Hospital, and a number of YouTubers, including myself. So I'm very honored to take part. Use the promo code MRTVCFB. MRTVCFB. Use that promo code. Um, and again, you get 50% additional to your account added if you use the promo code MRTVCFB. Let's talk Florida Gators coming off a surprising 10-3 and campaign, 5-3 and in the SEC, and Dan Mullins. First go-around in Gainesville as the head coach. Uh, so the Gators have obviously been up and down ever since Urban Meyer stepped off campus. Uh, yes, the Jim McElwain era, the Will Muschamp era, had a couple highs. Some SEC Eastern Division champions, uh, the 2012 team under Will Muschamp, uh, going 11-1 in the regular season, almost getting to the national championship game. So, but there have been the 4-7 and seven dips as well. So that was the one season prior to Mullen, of course, that exited Jim McElwain. 4-7, and 3-5 and five in the SEC. Prior to that, a 9-4 and four campaign, SEC Eastern Division Championship and 6-2 and two record. Then another SEC East under McElwain as we look back four years and get the, the trajectory look 7-1, and one, but they lost all the really good teams going 10-4 and four and getting blasted down the stretch against the likes of Florida State, Alabama in the SEC title game and Michigan that season. So all told, one season under Mullen, three under McIlwain, 33-18, not good enough for Florida standards. 33-18, and 21-11 in the SEC East, but again, two division championships. The recruiting, so Dan Mullen's being given credit for improving the recruiting from what I hear from a number of people, but that's really not the case. Uh, maybe it's just a better focused recruiting, a better sales job in, recor in recruiting, and better perception out there that Florida's on the rise. But under Jim McElwain, the 2016 through 18 numbers were really good. Number six in the SEC, but number 12 in the nation in 16. In 17, they were fifth in the nation, number 11. Uh, number 11 in the nation, number five in the SEC. 2018, number four in the SEC, number 14 in college football. Uh, and then under Dan Mullen, uh, number five and number five the last two years and going into the 2020 cycle. Right now, they stand at 11th in the nation in recruiting for 2020. They were number nine in 2019. So the trajectory of this program pretty much changed from the time Dan Mullen's plane landed in Gainesville. There was that much excitement and approval of the hire, even though they had talked about Chip Kelly coming and Gator fans were excited about that, a semblance of some of them. Uh, but when Dan Mullen landed and he started to talk Florida football, knowing the culture, knowing the university, the landscape, the program, and having success in the program as offensive coordinator means so much to this program. And again, the recruiting has not been much better, if at all, consider that in 2012, 13, and 14, that Florida had top five recruiting classes, but turned them into nothing on the field for the most part. This is all about credibility with Dan Mullen. And again, knowing the culture of the program and knowing how to develop and showing that he's got a track record elsewhere at Mississippi State with much less to work with and built them into a winner. And he knows how to develop quarterbacks. So with that, we get to the offense. 427 yards per game last year, 35 points per game last year. Best number since 2009. That was Tim Tebow's last season where they went 12-1, won the Sugar Bowl, came within an eyelash of another national championship run. Felipe Franks still is not considered an elite quarterback. But man, the development was substantial last year. He went from marginal nine touchdowns, eight picks this season before to 24 touchdowns, six interceptions. And he was such so much better uh, in game situations, in pressure situations when it mattered. 
He wasn't perfect, no, but he had a really good season that I don't think he's given enough credit for. This kid has a pro skill set when you look at the size at 6'6", 240. Look at the arm, look at the mobility, and 58% uh, completion percentage, especially considering that wide receiver core, needs to get better. So that's the one downside that needs to get better. Would love to see him in the low to mid-60 range. The wide receivers are probably the best they've been in Florida in a decade. Senior Van Jefferson caught 35 last year, six touchdowns. You got Kadarius Toney, who's kind of a grab bag, can do just about anything you need him to do. Hit 25 catches last year. Josh Hammond, 28 catches, four touchdowns. And Tyree Cleveland, one of the best of the bunch um, over the last couple of years. 18 catches, three touchdowns. His production way down last year. Trevon Grimes had 26 catches, so he obviously spread it out. Uh, the running game is really good. Uh, the, the running back situation, probably third best in the SEC to Georgia and Alabama with LaMichael P. Ryan now the guy after gaining over 800 yards, 6.2 per carry, seven touchdowns. Malik Davis had the big 2017 with about 1,000 yards. Um, out most of, it, really, the entire season last year had his legal issues, uh, off-the-field issues, and then Damian Pierce, in the mix again after running for 6.1 yards per carry last year. So the running game, at least at the running back position, is stout. The offensive line, there's some, some concern there. After there's been years of concern, Florida fielded its best offensive line in 2018, but they lose four starters and 141 starts. They're led by senior center Nick Buchanan. They've got a couple juniors that need to step up in uh, Stone Forsyth and Gene DeLance. Uh, this line was second in the SEC in second fewest tackles for loss and third fewest sacks. So if they can get the young guys that they've recruited and recruited well to fill those gaps, then they can maintain what they established in 2018. So it's a good offense. It's not a great offense. It's not one of the best in the nation. It's a very good offense a top 25 to 30 offense at least it could be much better if if the offensive line comes through considering the running backs wide receivers and frank's development it could be a top 10 offense all right the defense is considered uh in that top 10 to 15 range todd grantham uh received overtures from the nfl cincinnati Bengals. got a three hundred thousand dollar raise i didn't get a three hundred thousand dollar raise this past offseason Maybe next offseason. But for Todd Grantham, he gets the big raise. He's back with a 3-4 defense. And these guys knowing, hey, same system, 3-4, we can just attack it. We know it. We know the scheme. We know where to be. That just means a ton on defense. Uh, they bring back 13 of their top 17 tacklers. Uh, they've got one of the top cornerback tandems in all of college football, C.J. Henderson, two picks. Marco Wilson, 10 passes defensed in 2017. He got banged up. They're going to love having him for the entirety of 2018, hopefully. The safeties are really good, and they've got more than two. They've got three to four safeties that they trust. Juwan Taylor at 43 stops. Brad Stewart, 41 tackles, two interceptions. You've got uh, Donovan Stoner back there as well. The linebacking core... David Reese is really good. He's the senior at 81 tackles. Jonathan Greenard comes in from Louisville, or he was one of the top performers in the ACC, but they're a bit shy at linebacker. Uh, the defensive line, losing players to the NFL. Uh, Jabari Zuniga, fortunately, he decided to spurn the NFL for his senior season. That's huge. He had 11 tackles for loss and six and a half sacks. This was the 13th rated pass defense in college football, and obviously you have to understand Florida was ahead in most of its games, so other teams were throwing, so that's a yardage stat that doesn't mean a ton. Actually, Florida's better than that against the pass and should be this season again. They did get picked apart a few times. Jake Fromm drew Locke in a loss, a blowout loss to Missouri, and even the likes of Terry Wilson at 69% in the loss to Kentucky so Florida, a bit inconsistent on defense, more so than they've been over the past decade. Okay, the schedule is bookended, of course, by Miami in Week 0, August 24th, and then the last game against Florida State, in which Gators trounced the Knolls last year, 
The SEC schedule features two difficult non-division games, Auburn at home and a trip to Death Valley to take on LSU. It's a very difficult schedule for the Florida Gators. And of course, we will uh, give you our final, final, final prediction on Florida, the SEC, and college football here before the uh, opening week. Would love to get your record on Florida football, what your thoughts are about Dan Mullen's uh, build out here in Gainesville to challenge Georgia right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.